I don't get to write very many proposals anymore. Back in the day when I did my TV show, oh my gosh, I was a proposal machine. Our entire show was funded through proposals, uh, but not so much anymore in this YouTube age. But last week, I got to write a proposal and I started to use some new features that are built into Google Docs that I hadn't used before. And I thought this would make a great demo. You should see these tools. So I'm gonna share them with you today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Now, as I mentioned off the top, I used to write a lot of proposals. I used Microsoft Word for them, and I was a proposal writing machine. And back then, we had a process where I would write a proposal, we would print it off, I would give it to my partner, he would edit it, they would clean up my clean up my language, clean up my uh, any mistakes that I made. Uh, sometimes I would just share the file with them, uh, but the file would go back and forth until it was finally done. When we wrote our proposal this week, I took advantage of collaboration tools that are built into Google Docs to allow my teammates to have their input in our proposal, which was great. I'll show you how that works, and that, that's just a, a wonderful process. But I also discovered the ability to link different document types uh, as I was preparing the content, which really excited me, and that was the, kind of the heart of today's demo. So let me dive in and show you, but before I do, I do want to mention today's sponsor, which is our partner at Thinkific. Thinkific is our learning management system, our LMS, where we store all of our courses that we deliver here on Dottotech. And when I discovered Thinkific, the entire Dottotech business model changed. We revolutionized how we do business because we could offer both free and paid courses elegantly and effortlessly using Thinkific. If you wanna see how we create mini courses and full courses here at Dottotech that we've used to turn our business around, check out the link that I'm gonna post above or the link in the description below and see what Thinkific has to offer to you. I wanna to begin today's demo by talking about good old fashioned document processing, collaborative writing of a document. Now in my day in Microsoft Word, that meant me writing a document out, saving it onto a floppy disk, giving the floppy disk to whoever was my editing partner, having them edit the document on their computer, copy the file back onto the floppy disk, give it back to me, I would stick it in my computer, and God help us if we lost the floppy disk. Oh my goodness, or it wore out because it was being used so much. Today, dealing with cloud-based services, Office 365, Google Drive, it is a dream to create collaborative documents. Uh, but you wanna make sure you understand the tools and you know what the capabilities are. Now, collaborative documents are really all about permissions, giving the right people permission to be able to do what they need to do on the document and having control, having somebody, the owner of a document, having control of that document. And there's a couple of ways that you can share documents with others. Uh, in Google Drive, for example, we can, if we, we can share an entire folder. Do you see here I have some administration folders and they indicate that they're shared? Those entire folders are shared with others. So any documents that we write in those folders, other people have access to, they can view those documents and they can also edit those documents. So you can do it on a global level like this and you will do this typically with team members, et cetera. You can also share documents on a document by document basis and I'm gonna show you that process right now. So here's a, a, just a sample document with, uh, with, with some placeholder text in it right now. But it's not set up to be shared with anybody at this point. But let's say I'm in the middle of doing, you know, a, a doc, creating a document and I wanna share it with a few people to work on it with me. I click on the share menu here and that brings me in to a menu that allows me to determine who I wanna share it with and what permissions I want to give that person and what they need to access the document. So it starts with, first of all, it's telling me right away that it's already shared with several people because it's inside of a shared folder. So I don't need to share it with Sophia or with Jen or anybody else that's on the team in this way here. But this is what's important right here, this drop down. This tells us kind of the mechanism that people can access the shared document with. And let me go through it. Anyone with this link can edit. If we, if we share the link, then anyone can edit it. Anyone with this link can comment on it because there's editing and there's also commenting on the document. I'll show you that in a moment. Or anyone can view it. So those are the main uh, kind of criteria that you can set up to share with others. But if we click on more, 
we can actually get a little bit more detail. Because one of the things people always ask is, Steve, can I share my Google Doc with somebody that doesn't have a Gmail account, a Google account? Yes, you can. In that case there, you want to say anyone with the link can access it, meaning they don't have to sign in, they don't have to use Google Docs uh, or Google Drive, their Google account, they can just link, click and sign in. You can even make a document completely public so that it's being hosted on the web, much like a, like a web, well, it is a web page at that point, they're like its own website, so that it's available to everybody to see and they don't even need a link. They can just go to that web page, uh, say that's already on your website. Or you can turn it off and only have specific people access it, in which case you give people permission through a password a mechanism. Once you've determined who you want to share it with and how you want to share it, you can just copy the link, which is a, it's a hellaciously long link. You see how long it is right there? But at that point there, anybody with this link can edit the document. Now let's talk about the editing process because I don't think we all pay attention to that as close as we should. There's more than just editing on a document. If you think about the kind of the life cycle of a, of a proposal or a document being created, sometimes people only want to ask questions about a section and they want to comment. They don't necessarily want to make changes. And so what'll happen sometimes is people will edit within the document. They will add question text into the document, but there's always the danger that something might get missed and it might get left in the document later on when it actually gets published or the wrong people see it. So we have here in Google Drive, the ability to choose whether we're editing or merely suggesting or viewing a document. Now, if you're in the editing mode in a document, any changes you made are gonna be entrenched in the document. They're just made as changes. Now, we can track all of the changes in another area of Google Drive, but the bottom line is a person seeing this won't realize that there was an edit made because it will be a directly edited piece of the document. What's far more useful in team editing is going into the suggesting mode. You just click on this and now any changes you made will not be looked at as a full edit, but instead it will become a suggestion. So there's a couple of ways that you can make suggestions. The first way is you can just highlight a piece of text like this and I'm gonna say this is repetitive. There we go, repetitive. There we go. This is repetitive. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I spell it. Uh, there it is. Repetitive. There we go. This is repetitive. So anybody now, or the, the owner of the document, when they come back and they look at it, they'll say that I commented that this is repetitive. That's one way of collaborating on a document. This is where you don't want to make a change, but you want to ask a question or comment on a section or a part of the document. Now, if you want to suggest a real change, so I'm going to suggest a new headline in here. When you start typing text on the document itself, it becomes a suggestion that can be accepted, but you'll see that it's a change that's been made. And I'm going to say here is my new headline. And so that's just going to be put in as a suggestion. So you see that I've added a suggestion here. Now, if I want to make a change, I can highlight the text. I can delete it. See, it's not actually deleted from the document yet, but it's struck through and my new text is going to say, and that should be here. There we go. And so we see when we look at the document that my, <laughs> I had trouble, there we go. There we go. Here is something new to add. There we go. So my new text is in green, the struck text has been crossed out, and when the person's going through as they're editing the document, if they decide they want to accept the changes that I've made as they're going through it, they can accept the suggestion, and now the old doc text has been dropped out, the new text has been inserted, and here is my new headline. If we want to add that, it's now added into the document as well. Of course, you'll have to do formatting, etc. So using this process, the owner of the document has total control, but everybody gets to have their input and their input gets to be credited to the people who are doing that editing. So they have context as they view the different edits. This works so well. And here's the cool thing. It works in real time. So if another person, another team member is editing the document that I'm working on, I will see their edits happening on my screen in real time. Now, sometimes it can get a little bit confusing, but it's fantastic when you're working on a document and you're working on one area, seeing a teammate working on another area of a document, and sometimes even almost playing ping pong, bouncing back and forth, and using the document itself almost as a chat platform as you have conversations back and forth, making changes to the documents, writing in, writing in modifications, and getting that document looking exactly the way 
way you want. I love this feature and it saves so much time and I think it makes our work that much better as a result. Now, the other thing that I discovered this week is I had to put in some spreadsheet values and I was still calculating what was happening on the spreadsheet. And so what we were actually showing was we were showing, uh, I was talking in the document about how many views we have here on the Dotto Tech channel because it was somebody looking at sponsoring the channel. So I discovered that, I guess I probably knew this was available, but I never used it. And forgive, forgive me if this is something you've seen before, uh, but if you haven't, take a look at this. This is awesome. You have, I have a little spreadsheet here, which is just basically our total number of viewers we have per month with a 10% growth rate, what we can anticipate in the viewership of the Dotto Tech channel over the next 12 months. And so I needed to tell our, our potential sponsor this information. I can take this spreadsheet, copy it, take it into whatever document that I'm preparing, and watch this. I, when I paste it into the document, it says, link to the spreadsheet or paste it unlinked. If I paste it unlinked, there's going to be no memory that it's connected to that particular spreadsheet. It's just going to be data that you, that you just paste. But if you leave it linked, and when you do that, you get a new menu item right here. Take a look right here when you click on the table. Do you see how you have the link? Now, what's cool is if you go in and you make any changes to the spreadsheet, let's say I decide that we're not going to have a 10%, but we're going to have a 15% growth rate on the channel. One can always hope. And let me change that to percentage. There we go, 15%. And I'm going to extend that down on the spreadsheet so that it recalculates the whole spreadsheet. Do you see how the whole spreadsheet's recalculated now? Watch what happens when I go back to the document. The document recognizes, you see we have a new icon here, that the spreadsheet has been updated. I made a change. And watch what happens when I update the spreadsheet. Boom. It updates all of the figures in the spreadsheet. This is so powerful. I mean, for a presentation like this or a proposal like this, it's powerful. But what about monthly sales reports, documents that, uh, template the documents that you send over and over again, that you're capturing information from spreadsheets and calculations that you're sending to your team members or reports that you create. This ability to link a word processing document to a spreadsheet and have the data transfer straight through and have the document aware that there's changes to the source data and then offering you the ability to be able to update them. Oh, I, 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 got, I got a little bit excited about it. And I, as I say, if it's something that you've seen before, forgive me for getting so excited about it and being late to the party. But if you haven't seen it, how cool was that? Well, I hope you found today's video to be useful. We look forward to your comments and suggestions. And if you have any suggestions for future videos here on Dotto Tech, please mention them in the comments below. I do take time to read each and every comment, even though I don't have time to respond to everyone. Now, if you found this video to be entertaining, useful, or enlightening, I have several favors to ask of you. The first is please share this video with others. Let your friends know about Dotto Tech if it's something that might be useful to them. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you hear when we release new videos here at Dotto Tech. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun stolen a castle. <laughs>